Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new free motion quilting tutorial. Today I am stitching Vertigo. This is one of my favorite spiraling designs. I'm just pulling around with it, adding some thread painting, and this is going to be a terrific stacking spiraling design for your quilts. It is a little on the t intense side, so I would say this is a great choice as like an accent design for your quilt. I probably wouldn't take it and try and cover the entire quilt with it. That would take a little while. Okay, so let's talk through it. First, you're gonna start with a circle shape, nice circular shape, and if you can't visualize that, basically what I do is I'm always thinking about that center dot. That's what I have in my head. As I swing around, I'm visualizing that center dot on the quilt. So now I'm gonna spiral into that imaginary center dot. And here's the thing, like that's in my head, that's something I can see in my head, but if you need to mark it like I just did, please do. So then I swirl into a circle and then I just keep circling and circling and circling and that adds a nice thread painting circle to the center. And then now stitch right through the middle of those lines to get all the way back out again. Little bit of travel stitching just to reach the next open space. And now let's stitch a little vertigo circle spiral right here. Well, it didn't end up all that little, but that's okay. <laughs> so this time I'm not gonna use any sort of marks. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just imagining where that center is and then swirling inside. If it was off, who cares? I'm not gonna pull, pick up a seam ripper and rip it out. I'm just gonna keep going because that's the thing, even if you made a mistake with this, your eye isn't gonna catch it. You're gonna see all of the different spirals kind of swirling together. You're not gonna see the one that you accidentally messed up, you know? So we have some weird areas as usual. This just happens in any quilting design. So the best thing to do is just fill it in with some gentle arching shapes. That's what I came up with after putting my finger on the design and that's kind of what you get when you cut it in half. Just some simple arching shapes, that'll be fine. So now I'm gonna fit in a smaller one. Let's see what happens when we shrink this down. I'm gonna spiral in, but you notice how quickly that spiral, it wasn't a lot of turns before I got right into the center. And that's okay because as I come out, I can swing all the way around and that'll fill that in consistently with the rest of the shapes. Again, I've got a little weird area here. I'm just gonna bounce and bounce in order to fill it in. That's just fine. You know, sometimes when I look like at a space like this, I really wanna estimate my space to fill it in completely so I don't end up with those little weird gaps. So sometimes I'll grab my marking pencil and just go on ahead and mark that outline of that shape and maybe a few shapes around it just to plan it out a little bit. And that can save you time. A lot of times quilters get a little confused about marking. You know, it seems like it's more time consuming or that it would be tedious. But in actual fact, I think marking a design can sometimes help speed you up and make you a little bit faster. Certainly I'm gonna stitch both of these shapes a little faster because I know exactly where they're supposed to go. So here, this one was half cut off, but I still managed the spiral shape inside of it. And so now I'm travel stitch down and I can form this circle shape right between those two. Now I'll swirl in. And another thing you might wanna do is alter the size of your thread painting center dot just a bit for the sizes of your circles. So like this really big one, I had a really big center dot. For this little tiny baby one, I had a really small center dot. You know, or you can keep it consistent throughout. Kind of play with that and just see what effects that you can get. All of these different decisions, these are just design decisions, and yes, they will affect how your quilt ends up looking in the end. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish Vertigo. So that's it for this video. My name is Leah Day, and I love teaching people how to machine quilt on their home machine. If you'd like to learn more about quilting real quilts, like the quilt behind me, join me for the Machine Quilting Block Party. Each month, you'll learn how to piece a block and how to quilt it with a variety of beautiful designs and quilting techniques. Check it out at leahday.com slash block party. Until next time, let's go quilt.